up, guys? So you're either thinking about starting your own tree service or you just did. But here's 10 steps to help you be successful in your adventure. You're hoping it turns out like this. But it might actually turn out like this. Hope you enjoy the video. Protect yourself. How do you protect yourself? Well, a good place to start is to get some good insurance. You should probably have at least a million dollar policy. There's other ways to protect yourself too. Make yourself a good bid sheet and a good contract. When you write out a bid sheet, you know exactly what you're there to do and so does the customer. So you don't run into issues where the customer thinks you're gonna do more than you are. Um, also, you know, writing up a good contract protects you legally. And if you can get a customer to sign your contract, they're less likely to back out on you. So keep that in mind. If you guys have any questions on how to make a good contract, Go ahead and leave, leave a comment below and I'll, I'll try to help you out. You should probably also have a lawyer check that out for you. But when you're trying to protect yourself, make sure you make a good contract. Bidding. Don't bid jobs to win them, bid them to make money. You might be excited first to bid jobs and, and to land them, but the important thing is to bid them and make money. Oh, oh yeah, man, we got this one, dude. Total, you got it? Total removal cleaning up everything. It's gonna keep us busy for at least a week, stump grinding, and we're gonna plant a tree, dude. Oh, that's great. Yeah, that's gonna be awesome. Very cool. How much, uh, how much do you bid it for? Like 200 bucks. This is the tree that you bid for $200. This one that I can't even, yeah. yeah. Go get in the truck. And keep in mind, when you're bidding, if you bid low, that customer might call you back and they're gonna expect that same low price. They're gonna tell their friends about the low price that you gave them. So keep that in mind, even though you're trying to grow, keep your prices up to make money, not just to win jobs. Um, how do you bid, especially at the beginning? You need to not worry about what everybody else is bidding around you. Uh, you need to worry about how much money you need to make per month. Um, that's how you're gonna determine how much you need to bid your job, especially when you're starting out. So what you need to do is figure out how much your monthly bills are, and then divide that by the amount of days that you're gonna work in the month, and then even break it down even farther into the hours that you're gonna work in each day. And that's how you're gonna determine uh, how much you need to bid your jobs for. And um, keep in mind, things you wanna um, keep in mind will be considered bills, paychecks, um, expenses, uh, your savings. Those are the things you wanna keep in mind when you're bidding to make sure you make money. Purchase quality climbing and rigging equipment. Uh, there's so much I can say about climbing gear and rigging gear. And I, you know, I do specific vi videos on YouTube on specific products, you guys can check that out. Uh, however, you know, just when it comes to, you know, climbing and rigging equipment, it's just important that you guys buy quality, good gear. Um, when I was starting up, I did a lot of research online to see where to uh, order all my startup equipment. I ended up going with West Spur. Uh, one of the main reasons I went with West Spur is because of the catalog, I got my hands on one of theirs, and it's a free uh, catalog. You have to go to their website and get it. But the reason I like it so much is because it educated me on the products. I wasn't just, just selling them to me. Um, when you're starting off, you're not sure what all this stuff is. There's so much, you know, so many different products. Uh, with that catalog, you can really compare the different products to see what's really good for you. Especially when you're on a budget, you can't buy everything. So you have to just get what can, uh, you know, give you a pretty well rounded uh, you know, set of equipment and gear. Uh, so it's, it's really nice to be able to go through that catalog and research the different things uh, when it comes to mind. So that's really the main reason you know, I, I like Westford. And then on top of that, you know, when I went to order, I contacted Ryan, the, the owner, and you know, I super helpful. You know, I sent a huge list of what I wanted, and he even suggested some different things, which was really great. It actually worked out good. And on top of that, uh, they have a nice guy, Dave, there. He's an arborist, professional arborist, been doing it many years. Um, he's a great resource for you guys. Uh, you can actually call up anytime, you know, when they're open, and uh, if you have a question about a piece of gear or, uh, you know, or even, you know, techniques, um, He's there to help you and answer your questions and you know, help decide if the product's really good for you or not. Um, so keep that in mind. Um, when I was making this video, I actually decided to contact this person and my go-to company. They were excited about the video. They were gracious enough and they wanted to help. So they're offering all my viewers 10% off um, their next purchase, which is great. You know, if you go to westpur.com uh, after you watch this video uh, for the next six months, uh, once you check out, just type in capital J-O-E on your, uh, your order there for the coupon code and uh, look at your 10% off, so how cool is that? But um, yeah, I'm not gonna get into like specific uh, gear in this video just for time's sake, but the important thing is that you guys buy 
quality uh, climbing rating here. So keep that in mind. Training. You know, mistakes in this industry are life threatening. You guys honestly need to get some professional training. I went to ACRT in Akron, Ohio, and I took a course there and it was helpful. But there's other methods of training if you can't make it to a course. One I would recommend, it's free. Get the Westford catalog, man. This is a training device in and of itself. Look at this, they'll show you how to do some rigging in here, negative lock rigging, some slide lining, stuff like that. I think what's more important though is you can compare the ropes in here, learn about their strengths, their, their uses. That's training in itself that you don't really think about when you're getting started on a tree service. Compare the beaners, all that stuff. It's fun too, just read through the magazine. Uh, one thing I would highly recommend you guys get would be the Working Climbing Series DVD by Jerry Baran. Phenomenal set, guys. It can honestly save your life. When I started my tree service, I invested in that, and boy, it was the best investment I made uh, for my safety and my skills. Um, you're gonna get well-rounded on, on climbing, uh, rigging, uh, felling. All those things are super important when you're starting off and, and when you're doing this job. Um, guys, super awesome DVD, Jerry Baran. Check it out. Uh, it's a few hundred bucks, but if you go to westspur.com, use the coupon code capital J-O-E for 10% off that next order on your... So yeah, guys, like I said, get some professional training. It's not worth your life. You got to know what you're doing before you get into trees. Client base. Build your client base by doing good work. The best advertisement is a good reputation. Uh, you know, at first you're probably going to have to advertise some just to get your name out there because you're so new. You know, yellow pages, Facebook, local papers, things like that, just to get your name out there. But honestly, the best advertisement is a good reputation and doing good work for people. Honesty, integrity, those are the things that matter, okay? Go the extra mile for people. Um, make things right when you do them wrong, because you will. You'll break something or you'll do something stupid, but uh, make it right. Uh, sometimes the customer's wrong. You know, and it'll upset you, but go the extra mile for them. And even if it gets to the point where they're t totally wrong and they're actually being kind of rude about it, you don't have to work for them again. You just go the extra mile so they can't say anything bad about you. So that's the important thing. So the way you build your client base is by doing good work and having a good reputation. And you'll have more work than you can, than you can handle. Be realistic about your skill set. Uh, when you have your own business, you gotta wear many hats. Some days you're a tree climber, but some days you're a mechanic. You're gonna spend a lot of time working on your vehicle. Some days you're going to do your accounting, and some days you're going to try to write up papers like a lawyer. Uh, don't be afraid, and uh, it's certainly important to find a good lawyer and also a good accountant. Uh, sometimes that can be a hard thing to do, uh, but you really need to find them because uh, you can't do everything, and uh, you certainly need to uh, outsource a lot of things like that. You're going to need a good mechanic. When you're starting off, you can't afford a good mechanic, so you're going to need to know how to do a little bit of the mechanics yourself. Um, actually a lot. You will have breakdowns, especially starting out because you're buying used equipment and things like that. So you need to be good with a wrench. Uh, also, uh, you know, like I said, be realistic about your skill set. Uh, don't be afraid to turn down a job. If you show up to a job and you feel like it's way out of your, uh, your uh, skill set, then don't do it. It's not worth it. It's not worth ruining your reputation starting off. It also ain't worth killing yourself for it. So be realistic about your uh, skill sets. Cash flow. Your business is a living, breathing organization, and the way it survives is cash flow. You cannot start the business by depleting the cash. Uh, you might be excited to pay yourself uh, some money when you're first starting out, um, but sometimes you might get short because uh, you need to consider things like unexpected breakdowns, um, economy dropping, um, seasonal work, depending on where you live, possibly an injury to yourself or uh, the people who are working for you. Uh, that might actually cause you to lose money uh, or put you down for a while. Uh, so it's important that you keep these things in mind when you're balancing your checkbook. It's important that you can save as much money as you can uh, to keep your cash flow up. So keep that in mind, cash flow. Look and act professional. You know, at the beginning of this, I wasn't sure if I should spend money on a uniform or t shirts but I'm glad I did because it actually turned out to be very impactful for my business because people took me more seriously when me and my business partner were uh, doing jobs uh, you look like a professional, you look like you know what you're doing, and you don't look like you just came out of the bar, um, and people like that. Um, communication headset is also a key thing to uh, looking and acting professional. Uh, when you're on a job site and you're screaming, you know, just so the other person can hear you, it makes people nervous, even though nothing's going wrong. Um, this helps calm everybody down, and 
look like you're in complete control, which is a very important one when you're trying to look and act professional. Um, and the safety be benefits are huge. Um, print material, you know, print out nice print material. You know, your contracts and good sheets. Um, pay for a uh, professional logo. You know, spend the money on that. It'll be worth it. It's going to go wherever you go. And it'll be all over your material. So let a professional do that, and they'll take care of it for you. Uh, so remember, look and act professional. Debt or no debt? You know, this is a tricky one because you got to spend money to make money. You know, my recommendation would be not to go into any debt when you're starting off your tree service, or very little. I had 20 grand when I started mine. I bought ropes, rigging, chainsaw, I bought a truck, and I bought a chipper that was in a field for about 10 years before I got a truck and chipper. I fixed it up and I made it work. You don't even have to do that. You can literally trailer out material, you can do it with a pickup truck just to get started. There's guys who do it with a lot less than what I started with. But uh, you really need to get to know your income potential in your area, know your market, and see what's, what's really you know, available to capture there as far as the income. That will really help you decide whether it's worth investing or taking on debt to uh, grow your business, um, taking on debt first to get to a bigger chip or trucks, things like that. Um, once you know your market, then you can really decide, hey, should I take this next step? So my advice would be get to know your market, get to know the income potential there, and that will really help you decide whether you're going to take on debt or not. It's better to have friends than enemies. I think the mistake a lot of people make, especially in their running their own company, is that they become enemies with their competition rather than becoming friends. Now, not everybody's going to want to be your friend, especially your competition. But um, you know, it's good to have allies. You know, you're not going to be able to do everything. There's going to be times when you need help, and there's going to be times when your competition or your allies can, are going to need help as well. Um, I'm a skilled climber. That's my strength. But we don't have a bucket this company down the road that has a bucket but uh, is not able to climb. So sometimes we work together and it works out well. And, um, we use our, each other as an ally to keep that in mind. And you know, uh, it's called subcontracting is basically what it is. So when you're doing that, you make sure that they, uh, whoever you're working with has uh, is fully insured as required that they are. So keep that in mind. And like I said, it's better to have friends than enemies. Guys, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video and learned a lot. Don't forget to go to westspur.com. Check out the link below to save 10% off your next purchase with the capital J-O-E coupon code. Thank you, Ryan and Nathan at Westspur for sponsoring the video. If you guys have any questions or concerns or comments about the video or anything you would add to it, please leave in the comments below. And remember, guys, stay tied in.